I'm Hugh Hewitt, joined by the official movie critic of the Hugh Hewitt Show, Sonny Bunch. You can follow Sonny on Twitter, at Sonny Bunch. You can also listen to his podcast over at Across the Movie Aisle, and the bulwark goes to the movies. Good morning, Sonny. How are you on June 30th? Uh, I'm good, Hugh. How are you? Good. Do I go see Indiana Jones and whatever it's called? Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Uh, look, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big Indiana Jones fan. I uh, I spent much of the last week uh, humming the theme song around right, my house. Uh, if I had a producer, we would have that standing by. But go ahead. No, no but it's uh, you know I, I. Oh, he hung up on me. Never interrupt your movie critic. They get mad and hang up on you. We uh, we lost him there. We'll go back and find him because uh, Sonny is is always good. Uh, he's always up early from Texas, and we always appreciate hey, that. He, there he's back. Go ahead, tell us more. Uh, I like the series. I like uh, I like Harrison Ford. Um, I really I wanted I wanted to like this a lot, Hugh. So I, I just want to set the stage here. I wanted to set Uh-oh. the stage here. So I uh, look. I'm I am one of these people who uh, will will defend the kingdom of the crystal skull slightly. I, I, I don't think it's a terrible movie. You know, a lot of people really hate that movie. I don't hate it. Um, but, uh, uh, it's not great. It's the worst of the worst of the, the four Indiana Jones movies. And this is probably on par with that for a lot of the same reasons. Um, you know, so look here uh, to, to set the stage for you, the, this movie begins, uh, in, in world war two towards the end of world war two Indiana Jones, uh, who's played by a de-aged Harrison Ford in this sequence, is you know in in Nazi territory. He's trying to recover artifacts that are being stolen and disappeared by the Nazis. Uh, one of them being the uh, titular Dial of Destiny, uh, which has a Greek name that I will not try to pronounce here on the show and embarrass myself. Um, the uh, this this dial you know was created by archimedes and uh, a nazi scientist believes he can use it to correct hitler's many mistakes uh, and th- that way the germans can win the war um anyway uh, long story short uh harrison ford and uh, one of his compatriots indy they they get away with the they get away with the dial they they leave and and uh, escape back to america with it fast forward adventures to- ensue Fast forward, exactly. Fast forward to 1969, uh, and Indy is a, he's an old, broken down, uh, lonely old man. He's about to retire uh, from being a professor, and uh, gets gets sucked into one more adventure with his goddaughter, uh, played by Phoebe Waller Bridge. Uh, she she wants to get her hands on the Dial of Destiny for uh, you know reasons that are less than pure. You know you know how Indy always says it belongs in a museum. That's his, yes. it's one of his, one of his catchphrases. Uh, turns out she does not really believe in that, uh, that, that saying. She wants to get it and sell it on the black market to pay off some debt. Um, and she learns, you know, the importance of uh, history and uh, keeping things out of, out, of pub- or out of private hands and in the public. Um, Indy learns, you know, uh, to, to let things go and to kind of move on and, um, uh, I don't know. Heal, heal from from the wounds of his past. So you know, one of the, one of the subplots of this movie that doesn't really, I feel like it it could use a little more little more play here. Uh, you know, uh, at the end of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, right? We we learn that Indy is a father. Shia, he's Shia LaBeouf is his kid, right? And he's he's gonna he's gonna pass the torch on to Shia. Well, at the start of this movie, uh, the, the the son has died. He, he went to Vietnam. He's dead. Indy's very sad. It's led to his, the des- dissolution of his marriage with... So so this uh, is 1969, Sonny? Yeah, so we're in 1969. Do they do 1969 right at least? Well, I mean, I wasn't there, so it's it's hard to say. But you, you, you hit all the beats. We get the Beatles on the radio. We get loud hippie kids having... Uh, parties and you know in New York in small little apartments uh, you, you get a ticker tape parade with the uh, the astronauts who have gone to the moon um, all right good anyway. okay good 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 so there's there's some of that but I mean look here's here's the problem with almost all of this stuff is that it all looks fake 
and I don't mean, you know, look, you, you go back and you watch Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? And there's stuff that looks fake. There are effect sequences that are like, okay, this is dated because that's just the nature of the beast, right? But when you're watching the movie, it's still – it looks uh, real in the in the other moments, in the beat-to-beat, the beat, you know, walk-and-talk sort of things, right? In this movie, just like in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, it looks like everything was shot against a green screen. Everything – it looks like everything was shot um, uh, rear projection when they're driving in cars. And I just I, – I don't know. Well, if Sonny, how much of this rest. comes from having an 80-year-old lead? In, in I've been watching 1923, and Harrison Ford is a very old man in 1923, and he acts and he walks like a very old man. He acts and walks like Joe Biden, but one who hasn't lost you know half of his mental acuity. What, what does Harrison Ford do in this? Does he look like an 80-year-old man? Is he supposed to be an 80-year-old man? He, yes. I, he mostly he mostly does. Uh, I, I would say that he is a little well in the I, in the. I would be curious to know how they. I'll put it this way. I'd be curious to know how they film that flashback sequence because that Indiana Jones does not move like an eighty year old man. Remember in the Irishman when they do the de aging and there's yes. a, the, oh Robert, yes. Robert De Niro is like trying to stomp a guy out on a curb and it just looks kind of sad. It, there's nothing like that. There's nothing like that here. Um, uh, so I, I would be curious. Or Robert Redford a... in the uh, 1969 radical movie when he tries to run after seducing a beautiful young lady. I, I mean, it's just silly. Some yeah, things you yeah, can't yeah. do with 80 year And by the way, there are lots of very agile 80 year old men, and I don't think any of them can do stunt work. Yeah. So I, I, I they, they, they get around that pretty well, I think. And I, I would be surprised if most of the uh, flashback stuff wasn't shot with a uh, with a stunt double with Harrison Ford's face kind of pasted sure. uh, on top. I would I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked if that. But, you know, I, again, it's not it's not it's not Harrison Ford's movements that are the issue. It's just the, it's the lighting. It's the camera work. It's everything. It just it all looks very. Not real. And it, you well, know, well look, yeah, Sonny, but the key question for this audience, both for parents and grandparents, will a nine-year-old boy like the movie? Uh, I don't I don't think so. I mean, look, it's, it's, it's here's here's another problem with it. it. It's two and a half hours long, Hugh. Oh. Like the, the Raiders of Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, even Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, right? These are all two-hour movies. Um, pretty Pretty tight. They move well. They go from beat to beat to beat. Uh, you know, Last Crusade was a little longer. I think it was like two hours and ten minutes or so. But, I mean, this is two and a half hours. It, it is – I wouldn't describe it as a slog. I was never, I was never annoyed uh, by the length. But it definitely does not – it does not move on rails like its predecessors. Um, it has a – uh, I won't spoil it, but it, it takes a fairly big swing uh, in the third act. And I, I am very curious to see if that lands. I, I, you know what, Sonny? I, as someone who experienced these movies in real time, I'm old enough to have watched all of these, like the Star Wars, in the theater. You've really said, I'm glad you're giving us insurance against being disappointed. Because this is what this segment is. Do not go in expecting the Temple of Doom kind of thrill that you got 40 years ago. Because it didn't come Yeah, out. Yeah, no, it, it's, uh, it is a, it is a, I mean, I, I it's, Look, again, I'm one of these weirdos who will defend uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, at least on a on a storytelling beat to beat moment. It's entertaining enough. Um, but this is uh, this is this is probably a little worse than that. Uh, and I, I don't. I, I All would right. Not... Sonny, is there is there anything else? The Jennifer Lawrence movie that we talked about last week bombed, by the way, bombed with a capital B. Uh, yeah, it, 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 yeah, that's it, that's it, what it, I read. It, 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 it did. It, it made fifteen million dollars, which is not a terrible amount of Ooh. money for a, a hard R uh, comedy. That's a you know a mid budget sort of thing. I, like if it, uh, it depends. It to to say it it has bombed is not right yet. It could still be fine. Okay. It depends on the Bombay is open and the reviews are horrible. What about? Is there anything for anyone else to see, or is every single screen in America going to be the? The Indiana Jones comes back at age eighty movie. Uh, I mean, I kind of liked Asteroid City a little more on second viewing, but I, I still wouldn't necessarily strongly recommend it. Um, 
Uh, I don't know. It's it's a weird. Boy, it's a Hollywood weird is dying. Time. What do you think about Netflix putting ads on it, honey? Uh, it's funny. Netflix always said that there was they were never going to do that. Thing. Right? You know, oh, we don't we don't do ads. We don't do ads. And I mean, look, it's still it's it's a thing that you can pay less money to get Netflix and get ads. They think it's a they think it's a tier of customer that is, um, you know, that is not being uh, exploited or addressed. So they're they're going for it. I, I don't know. I'm I my my whole thing. Look, I pay extra for every service not to get ads, even the ones I only watch, you know, once once every couple of months because I can't stand ads. You and I me both, and I, I, we, we, did, we hit the wrong button on Hulu, and therefore I won't watch Hulu anymore. Sonny Bunch, we are out of time. Have a wonderful 4th of July, even though there's no great movie to go see, which is very sad for the 4th of July because it rains in some places. Other places, the air quality is so terrible. Sonny Bunch can be listened to across the movie aisle at iTunes, or Bulwark goes to the movie at iTunes. And, of course, follow him on Twitter at Sonny Bunch.